just checking out a few camera angles and stuff so you can see this. These are the owl pellets I'm going to dissect. I'm at least going to do one for you here on video. How they come up in foil, <clears throat> not how they come out of the owl. Um, your lab intro kind of explains this, but uh, basically, owls, <clears throat> when they eat, hey Claire, when owls eat, they eat like everything, right? Um, bones, hair, the whole like rodent goes down and then they choke back up what they can't digest. And that's what an owl pellet is. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't look like this when it comes out of the owl. <laughs> Somebody painstakingly wraps that regurgitated uh, waste into this nice little neat package. And I just want to check one other camera angle so that you can get like an overhead. Um, let's try this. That did not work. Oh, there it is. Never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Ha -ha. Okay. So I'm just going to use this uh, ID sheet to roughly try to um, just see what kind of bones we have. It's broken down into skulls, feet, scapula, collarbone, um, pelvis. And ribs. And then this isn't really precise or anything, but it's just a rough guide. Um, the sizes of the bones can help tell us the type of meal that the owl ate. This goes. So I'm going to use, actually, I'm going to put this like, to the side. So when I find the good bones and maybe get some graph paper. Just because this makes it kind of a hairy mess. Oh. This has been in the garage for like two weeks now. So it's kind of cold and wet. It's kind of gross. Okay. There's some basic dissection tools. I'm just going to grab some forceps and a probe. Maybe two forceps so I can I have to pry anything open. Crunchy. Mm. Lots of hair. Oh. Oh, that kind of looks like a claw or something. No, I think this is part of a skull, maybe. Some really fine uh, ribbing on this bone. Oh, camera to find it. Right here. Got 
These buns are delicate. <laughs> Too delicate for eight in the morning. Gosh, I'm not sure what that is. So I'm just gonna. Um, usually when I, you do something like this, it's kind of easier to go through the whole thing and pull all the bones out and then spend the time IDing stuff. And in real lab, you'd probably, you know, have split up the work with you and your lab partner. Funny, every time I open these, I'm like, oh, I hope the owl ate something good. Like, the way you wouldn't find animal parts, but they're always full of animal parts. Yeah. I'm just digging through. Oh, that's a skull. Ow. You clean up the orbitals. Ooh. That's going to be a skull. Cool. So metal. Something. Um, oh, shoot, I did that. Really dense right there. I'm gonna have to go back through this chunk, I think. Let's the bone. It really looks like a scapula right there. Almost looks like a tooth or something. See that ribbing? Mm -hmm. Wow. This is so crunchy. I was at Honey Run yesterday and I think I found a raccoon jaw. Like the 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 like back part of his jaw. Yeah. I brought it home. <laughs> it? What? You like clean it off and keep it? Yeah. 
It's soaking in bleach. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bone. I'm not sure I'm going to remember the full name, but it's like bone and taxidermy group on Facebook. These people are hardcore. <laughs> But they do some really beautiful work. Oh. It's a whole world. <laughs> There's another one. <clears throat> this is cute. <laughs> Wow. I feel like all these noises remind me of being at the dentist. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Whoa. Lots of skulls. Uh -huh. oh, this is one too. It's just something really dense. This is like a job, by the way, at Alum Creek. Really? They have a nature center. Um, another head. Uh, I mean, and they they uh, keep owls. So somebody that's a really big part of animal keeping is you you have to analyze their scat to understand like how they're doing digestively and how the nutrition is faring and. Um, Dissecting owl pellets is a huge insight into how an ecosystem is functioning. Um, That'd be a really fun job. <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. It's a little tedious. <laughs> but I think it's like, uh, I'd be proud of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably rather be the person who works for Carolina who collects these and sends them <laughs> to teachers. I'd be more interested in that. I think your video's paused on the, the section part, that part. My phone went to sleep. Thank you. Ooh, this is like flat and wide, so it's like a pelvis or a scapula. Oh, nope. Maybe it doesn't, maybe it isn't, but it's got that weird ribbing, like the teeth looking thing. So this is unrelated, but I was looking at the news this morning and Yesterday, it was reported that and a city employee at the wastewater treatment had to resign because he, they found out he'd been falsifying reports. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm <Rudolph. laughs> yeah, I'm going to read it. I paid 50 cents to get him out here in these Yeah. I know in Kenyan, one time this lady, like, just didn't pour in the chemicals for a bit just because she didn't. I feel like she, I think it was like she just didn't feel like it or something, but the lady that was in charge of the um, Gambier water mm -hmm. I forget who told me that. That was a long time ago. Though. Yeah, that kind of a job. I bet it does seem like nobody's watching and it doesn't matter. Yeah. But <laughs> it's enormous responsibility. Uh -huh. Oh, 
Some of these are so tiny. It's like picking up nail clippings. <laughs> A couple more areas that I can still feel are really dense. I remember going to Allen Creek and learning about owls probably in middle school at some point, maybe sixth grade. And I still remember the keeper who was handling the owl telling us uh, it would be like if you ate a Snickers bar, but you didn't even take it out of the wrapper. <laughs> That's how owls eat, and then you would just cough up the wrapper later. <laughs> I just, it's weird. I, all these bones are so jagged and like fragmented now. Like the way that it's packaged, uh, the owl's digestive tract must use this hair like uh, to not scratch the throat. Oh yeah. You know, it's really claws and <laughs> teeth.
there are uh, chickadees in my garage for some reason right now, and they're really freaking me out. <laughs> it really sounds like a person's walking up behind me. Good. There are way more bones in this than I thought there would be. I hear that a lot. And I, like I said, I always am sort of feeling like it's a lot to ask, but it's really not. They will always be chock full of bones. <laughs> we all eat pretty good. <laughs> I hear them a lot in Knox County, but I don't see them. But I used to see them more in Chicago because all the animals in Chicago are a little bit more used to humans. Mm -hmm. But I definitely hear them more. I hear them too. I've, I don't think I've seen, I've seen it probably maybe one or two in my life, I feel like, <laughs> that I can remember, but I haven't ever. I can definitely hear him. So the hair, the fur here will always be, no matter how small these bones are, the hair will always be a little bit lighter in weight. This is like an old trick where we blow on <laughs> stuff because it'll move the hair out of the way. We're kind of doing that to get a finer view. But this is pretty good. This is about all it takes. I could probably keep finding little bones all day long. Ooh, something interesting there. Maybe. It's really easy to tell when you got a mass with a bone in it. That texture difference between the bone and the fur is just makes it really easy. This is also like such a kid-friendly thing if you're ever 
working with kids in an educational capacity. This would be like a terrific thing for like a spy summer science camp day. Yeah. This is exactly the kind of thing. Our pellets are really cheap. You can buy them online, by the way, Amazon. Oh, awesome. <laughs> it's not like a regulated <laughs> thing. Or Probably like $15, $10, $15 maybe at the most for a bag of 10. All right, I'm going to call it because I live on 229. It gets loud. Sorry, I just realized when I'm out here. Truck mania. <laughs> Probably drive by wondering what I'm doing. They can't tell I'm <laughs> collecting skulls here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ID these just sort of roughly get you guys some data. So, um, But first I'm going to go get a refill because the best part about Garage Lab is that I can have coffee. Coffee's cold. I just want to... First, I'm going to wash my hands because I just touched that, and then I'm going to get a refill. <laughs> so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Which? You see the see the worksheet? Yes. I think I have one in my lab. Oh good. Yeah, it's similar. It's not a circle, but it's similar. One of the bones. I'm 
just cleaning this up. <clears throat> I want I don't want the I want the bones to go to life flat. And this is already I'm working on a ring stand, so it's <laughs> a little wobbly. Okay. <clears throat> so this is just a rough guide. I'm just gonna do uh, let's see, I'll put the skulls first. Um, this is really supposed to be by size um, and shape. And since this one is, let me turn it so it's oriented. This one's kind of um, rounder. I'm gonna put it with the bird. I don't know, this one still has some eye sockets, so gonna, it's a little large. So one of the things they this would tell you is um, the diversity. If you have a really uh, healthy ecosystem, it should have higher biodiversity, and that should be reflected in the owl, right? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's like one one idea. I've noticed though, um, well, yeah, I don't know how many meals are represented in a single pellet. They usually aren't very diverse. Hmm. So it kind of tells you the owl um, has got some kind of like hot spot. <laughs> we can keep picking up the same same prey. Obviously, like they don't figure it out that fast. So you can just. I keep <clears throat> I pick some like a particular population until that runs clean. I like that. Okay, yeah. That's how this goes. It's <clears throat> pretty rough. Um, IDing bones is hard. <laughs> If I saw this in the wild, I didn't know anything. I uh, would probably think it's a claw, but it really looks like a lower jaw. Okay. Oh yeah. Let's flip it over. I think. Yeah, look at that. Hmm. I like three of those. Let's take one. I'm probably going to go back and revisit this one, make sure. I feel good about labeling this skulls. This kind of reminds me of playing that game Operation. Yeah. I don't know. These are just. Hmm. I'm noticing the way the bone has like this real <clears throat> ball at the end, like a ball and socket kind of. I like that. Or that. Or even these. It seems pretty small. It's, um, you know, if it's a bird bone, it should be hollow. And that is not hollow. So I'm going to keep it in the rodent. Well, I don't know. 
I just really just need to make a choice and then stick with it. <laughs> so. When in doubt, so slender. A rib, maybe? looks really distinct to that. kind of have this uh, undulating pattern. This is when it gets really hard. I just have like this little, little twig of a bone. And it's just straight. Watch it for that. It's just like nothing distinct. This one has a rib pattern. consistent with those. I think the screen's paused again. Thank you. It's got like a little fork.
This is a really big chunk, but I don't know what. It is, so I'm gonna put it, these guys. <clears throat> Seems to be kind of large. Well, that's about it. I like how the vertebrae are all separate once the owl eats it, like to it, like separates the spine. I guess so. <laughs> I imagine the way the owl picks it up probably snaps <laughs> several things. So, <laughs> pretty vicious. I thought it just like separated in there. I guess it probably wouldn't eat the whole spine at once. Which I think they do. I really think they just like swallow the whole thing. <laughs> but I know, you know, I mean, the mouse is probably running and the owl swoops in and picks it up. And it's probably like uh, the crunch yeah. of the moment <clears throat> probably snaps the neck or something. Mm. Yeah. Did you ever have to read uh, The Rats of Nim? The Secret mm -hmm. of Nim? Oh, it's like a young adult book. It's terrific. I think it's a movie, too, a cartoon movie. Um, oh, my God. There's an animal in there they have to talk to. Uh, they have to get, like, some answers. Of course, the owl's, like, the smart, the smart animal. Um, but it's so scary. I just remember as a kid being terrified <laughs> with that owl. Oh. <laughs> But it's a really good representation of owls. They're not friendly. Okay. So, I, don't even, I didn't bring up my data sheet. I don't know if it has you just tally up the bones, like per species and per bone type. Is there like a, some kind of table? I can't hear you, what? Is there like a data sheet? Yeah. Now it's like per species and per bone type or something? Yes, it has that. Um, it's like three bird skulls. Five, six, seven, eight, eight rodent skulls, lower. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six mole, mole bones. I don't see that they tell you what type of bone they are. Is it a limb? Isn't that a limb? Oh yeah, definitely a limb. Okay. There's front limb and hind limbs. Hmm. Those front limbs. I don't see that anywhere at all based on this thing. Um, it looks like a front one. Okay. Again, when in doubt, when you have like two choices like that, as long as you stay consistent and you on a data sheet, you would like put a note, you know, couldn't really tell. Yeah. But I erred with front limb or something like that. Okay. Happens all the time. <laughs> Uh, two rodent, three rodent. Is that a limb? It's a limb. What is that thing? I think it shows it on here somewhere. Um, yeah, I want to say, like, it looks like on this sheet, this is the lower part of the body, like the feet. Oh. Yeah, that's the hand. I think it's the hand limb because that has a little gap thing right there. Gap thing. Definitely. The little. Yeah. The three of those. Okay, three of those. This for more. That was rodent. Oh, uh, rodent? Mm hmm. Like two mole vertebrae. Okay.
like bird ribs. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven bird ribs. Yeah, that's a lot of bird ribs. <laughs> And I have two of these things, shrew hind limbs, two, two shrew. Hind limbs or? Yeah. Were they hind limbs? Yeah. They got that gap, okay. that uh, thing on the end. They're just smaller. Okay, yeah. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Has these little shrew ribs. Yep, ten shrew ribs. Okay. That's everybody. Awesome. Okay. That's fine keeping me company <laughs> of course i like the i like owl pellets now i'm searching for them well I'm trying to think of anywhere i can dead drop them for you like on middle path I'll, like stick them under a bench or something <laughs> and you can pick them up and well wrapped and everything <laughs> <laughs> Any questions in that lab that I, anything I didn't go over or? Um, I think that's everything. Um, there is pellet measurements, the mass length diameter and width. Shoot. Oops. <laughs> I honestly didn't do that until the now. I forgot. Um. Okay, I'm just going to measure. One from the same batch. Uh, did you say length and width? That works. This width. It says length, width, diameter, and mass. Okay, length is you do it at the longest part. It's about five and a half centimeters. Okay. Um so that's length. It should be width. Um, that one looks like three. Um, three point four centimeters. Okay. Quite three and a half. And the diameter. I'm going to cut it so I can do the diameter easy, but that's really dead. That's this. Let's get with the flail on. And that. Two point six, two point seven centimeters for diameter. Okay. And scale is inside. Taking a online class at Harvard for food science. Ooh, I'm not sure how my balance is in the kitchen. <laughs> Working on my labs.
two, one, tear. Oh, it's so much heavier than I thought. Eight grams. What? Oh, a dense one. Hey, well, it is full of bones. And way more than I, like a crazy amount more than I thought. I thought we'd find like maybe a couple things. I never thought we would find a whole skull, but then we found four, so. Yeah. I really could not get the uh, scalpel through this. I was hitting crunchy. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Okay. I guess I can take a look at the lab now that I'm inside. Anything else on there that you need? No, that's all of it. And I think this one's going to go with the fourth writing assignment. Okay. And what do we have left? Just the intro, I think. Yeah, I need to turn in the third still. Yeah, that's on Noodle. And then, what was the other one? And then there's another writing assignment that I had a question about, the one that's due this week. Mm -hmm. The one that was assigned this week. Mm -hmm. um, it says to do, hold up, let me find it first. Okay, I just put writing assignment. Oh, the energy use assignment. It says to, um, like, show the difference between, like, a month of your energy use once you start, like, conserving energy. Mm -hmm. Do we have to wait a month to write it, or do well, we just... I mean, <clears throat> if you, if your family, so some people are conserving energy just because they've been home, and then okay. some people are having the opposite. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, who's who's already handed it in and what I've read. So just whatever you've done the past month. Most people looked at the most recent month and then looked at the okay. bill. And then if your family has been more conscious of energy use, you can talk about it that way. But if not, you can talk about that too. Okay. Like, okay, sounds good. At least one one of your classmates noticed that her family is actually the bill went up <laughs> because everyone. Home. Mad about turning off the lights, or I feel mm -hmm. like leaving the TV on at night is really common. Mm -hmm. um, and I think since everyone's been home, it's been like exacerbated. So they just wrote about it that way that they are not conserving energy. Um, they still answer the question of like what they could do. Yes. Okay. No, you don't have to. Okay. Awesome. Wait a month. It's weird, you know. The course is set up to like make sure you remember that weather log which I feel like is not as urgent as the syllabus makes it seem. Um, but yet we're not urgent about reminding you that you're going to have to track your energy for a month. Yeah. Huh. That's weird. Oh, I also need to, how do I turn in the weather log? Do I submit it? Or if it's already online, do I, how do I submit it there? Um, you don't have to do anything if you did it on the Google sheet. Okay, sweet. I, I can that. touch it. Um, somebody sent me like a screenshot of the, that if you want but I'll, okay i know where it is i don't know how to screenshot stuff on my computer do I, is it like command what, do you, what kind of computer do you have i have a mac it is hold on. is it in the file thing it's called screenshot that's your app that's the app so if you go to your um app launcher okay look for screenshot it used to be called something else, but this is uh, oh, okay. With the last update, that's what it, they started calling it. Awesome. The last OS update. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Max are the best. <laughs> I do love this. Okay, I'm just double checking that I got you all your. Yeah, I think that's all of it. That's a good, good direction there. I like this lab material i didn't see any plant material um yeah this is a fun lab this is probably like uh probably it really is more suited for a younger mm -hmm. this is an ecology lab this no. is not, not environmental science technically just this is full-on eco mm. to be clear you know, I don't think like if you, um, you wouldn't normally find a lab like this in an environmental science class. Um, not this environmental science. This this textbook 
the topics that are covered is it's really meant to be like a survey of environmental science. So the ecology really kind of stops with natural selection usually, mm. you know, as a focus. Yeah. So, uh, again, this is really like fifth grade, middle school. This is like such a, <clears throat> if you ever find yourself in like a summer camp job or working for the BFEC or something, Noelle would be all over this. She'd, be like, she'd probably do this in her sleep, <clears throat> would be my guess. <laughs> so it is, it is fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit of a break, especially mm -hmm. right after water quality, which is pretty heavy chemistry. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's probably my favorite lab. Normally, that one and um, next week's uh, Quadrat Lab. So that one, um, I'll do like this. I'll, like, I'll log on in the, in the 8 o'clock hour on Friday um, and record it. But it, you can do it at home. You can just do it okay. in your backyard. Or um, you can't go, like, as a group. Like, you and Taylor and Ethan can't meet up at Fair Ridge Road. But you can individually if you wanted to go to Fair Ridge Park. Okay. I highly recommend because it's a really well kept secret. Oh, that sounds fun. Um, and it's really cool. You can't go where the landfill is, but the park is right adjacent to where the landfill has been converted. Okay. Cool. Still pretty young since it's been capped. Okay. So it's not stable. So that's why you can't go on it. But where we would have gone as a class is just right, right to the, I want to say east. Okay. Of where that, so you can kind of look and see. Um, okay. And I, I think even when you drive on Fair Road to get to the park entrance, you can see the caps. Like you can see where they have the gas, where they have to be able to measure uh, the gases that come off. This might make more sense after we do the waste management chapter. Um, but anyway, next week, if you want to do what I do at Fair Ridge, you could do that. Uh, I just have to figure out how to come up with a quadrat for you because <clears throat> I think we just use string though. So if you have like string or dental floss or if your mom cross stitches and or whatever, just string, twine. <laughs> I have string. <laughs> just as long as you have four equal sides. So. Okay. I was thinking yesterday, probably just like a foot, no more than two feet per side. That's a pretty big quadrat. And then, you know, we're just going to do what I just did with bones, but we'll do it with plants. And you see, and if there are any animals at this time of year, if you get lucky with like a sow bug, a nice mm -hmm. spot or two. Uh, that yeah. sounds fun, though. I'll definitely do that. I feel like that'd be something yeah. better than sitting at home. <laughs> sure. I'll do that in the backyard. It's, it's, uh, uh takes me back to my childhood where we just we spent hours just digging in the backyard i, I feel like that still goes on in life um so i think it's fun i'll know more on third by thursday okay and figure it out but if this worked for you that should probably do something similar awesome cool all right well let me know if you have any questions and i'll be back online tuesday Okay, sounds good. Weekend. Oh, thank you. You too. Yeah.